All right, hello everybody. Welcome to um, one of our final things here last week of school. Uh, we're going to talk about the decline of the Cold War today. So our objectives and standards are to analyze the struggles the Soviet Union faced around the globe and to explain the change in policies between the United States and the Soviet Union. Take a moment there to read the standards. <coughs> And vocabulary preview here, we have detente, a policy of lessening Cold War tensions instead of brinkmanship policy, and SALT, which stands for Strategic Arms Limitation Talks that limited missiles launched by the U.S. and the Soviet Union. So our desired result, in what ways did the United States and the Soviet Union work to resolve tensions during the Cold War? So after Stalin died, more moderate uh, Soviet leaders came to power, and they're going to allow their Soviet countries more independence as long as they stayed allied with the Soviet Union. Now, tensions in Eastern Europe and with China did threaten Soviet Union power. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev, right there, uh, he became the dominant leader after Stalin died in 1953, and he did denounce the policies of Stalin of imprisoning and murdering Soviet citizens. And the country went through what they called de-Stalinization, or removing the memory of Stalin by destroying monuments of the former dictator. Although changes were being made, it did not affect those living in Soviet satellite nations, mostly, such as uh, the countries that the Soviet Union had control of, such as Hungary. In October 1956, the Hungarian army joined protesters in overthrowing the Soviet-controlled government, and a new communist leader by the name of Imri Nagy, uh, again, trying my best with his name, was very popular, and he promised free elections. He also demanded that Soviet troops leave the country. Now, the Soviet Union did send troops and tanks and battled the opposition in Hungary, and the pro-Soviet government uh, was eventually successful at ending the rebellion and Imre Nagy uh, was uh, executed. Now, Khrushchev did lose um, some prestige as a result of the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. In 1964, Leonard Brezhnev uh, was elected leader of the Soviet Union, and he quickly enacted controlling domestic policies, um, such as limits on speech and worship, along with stopping opposition and protest. In 1968, in Czechoslovakia, the communist leader Alexander Dubček loosened control. Also in Czechoslovakia, the communist leader who we just talked about, Alexander Dubček, uh, loosened control of censorship in the country. And there was a period of reform in the capital of Czechoslovakia. Prague is the capital of Czechoslovakia, so it was known as pr the Prague Spring. However, the reform movement only lasted until the summer. In August of 1968, Warsaw Pact nations invaded the country to stop the movement, and Brezhnev claimed the Soviet Union had a right to stop satellite countries from rejecting communism, and this became known as the Brezhnev Doctrine. The leader of communist China, Mao Zedong, and Stalin had signed a 30-year friendship treaty in 1950, uh, but this friendship's not going to last. The Soviets had assumed China would follow the leadership of the Soviet Union in global affairs. But as China grew stronger, they resented having to follow the Soviet Union policies. So China began to spread its own version of communism in, in Africa and Asia. In 1959, Khrushchev punished the Chinese by refusing to share nuclear uh, secrets with them and stop technical economic support in 1960. And fighting did break out between the two along the border between China and the Soviet Union, which created a fragile alliance. So you can begin to see how the Soviet Union begins to lose some power and some uh, prestige uh, in terms of the Cold War. Following the 1960s, policies by the United States and the Soviet Union changed from aggressive to relaxed. <laughs> So after struggling with the Vietnam War, the United States decided to move away from confrontation with the Soviet Union, and President Richard Nixon is going to use a strategy known as real politic, which we've talked about before, which is a German phrase of strategy that means realistic politics. So moving towards policies that lessen tensions between the two superpowers, this became known as detente, and both nations are going to agree to resolve tension and issues between them. 
President Richard Nixon became the first U.S. president to visit communist China, and three months later he visited the Soviet Union, and uh, both the Soviet Union and the United States attended the SALT meetings. Now, Nixon and Brezhnev uh, signed the SALT I treaty that limited the levels of number of intercontinental ballistic and submarine-launched missiles for five years. And in 1975, the Helsinki Accords allowed for more cooperation between the United States, the Soviet Union, and 35 other nations. And this is Nixon uh, meeting with Brezhnev uh, here. So here's Richard Nixon on the right, and then Brezhnev on the left. It's probably an interpreter in the middle there, but that's them meeting to discuss um, you know, reducing Cold War tensions. <clears throat> now, there's going to be a little bit of a return of tension, though. Uh, relations continue to improve under President Ford with the Soviet Union, but in the late 1970s, uh, President Carter was upset with the treatment of protesters in the Soviet Union. Again, this limiting of free speech, this trying to stop opposition. So, in Carter and Brezhnev signed the SALT II Treaty, uh, but it failed to pass the U.S. Senate as a result of the invasion of Afghanistan by the Soviet Union. Um, tensions continue to rise as other nations, such as China and India, develop their own nuclear arsenals as well. Now, Reagan and anti-communism. So President Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, and he was a strong anti-communist. Uh, he did move away from the policy of detente and increased defense spending, which did create a little bit more tension between the United States and the Soviet Union again. Um, in 1983, Reagan announced the SDI, or Strategic Defense Initiative Program, that would protect against enemy missiles. Tensions continued to rise uh, with the situation which we've talked about in Nicaragua, uh, but there will be a change in Soviet leadership in 1985 that created a new policy towards the U.S., and Reagan will also participate um, in talks as well with the Soviet Union. So finally, we will begin to see the end of the Cold War come to the end at the end of the 1980s, uh, and the Soviet Union will uh, not be a communist nation anymore eventually, and we'll begin to see the fall of these communist nations and tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. Okay, so our closure. In what ways did the United States and the Soviet Union work to resolve tensions during the Cold War? All right, think about some of those things we talked about. Be sure to include them in your answer. And I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and I'll talk to you soon.